Live from Union Square in the heart of San Francisco. It's The Cube, covering Spark Summit 2016. Brought to you by Databricks and IBM. Now, here are your hosts, John Walls and George Gilbert. Well, good morning and welcome back to Spark Summit 2016 here on The Cube. I'm John Walls along with George Gilbert. Great to have you here for our second day of coverage here from the Hilton Hotel as we continue our look at what's going on in the world of Spark. Uh, it has certainly been a fantastic couple of days we've had here already. Looking forward to, to uh, joining you throughout this day as well. Along with George, we are uh, very, very pleased to welcome Doug Cutting, who is uh, the chief architect at Cloudera, the father of Hadoop. I don't have to introduce you, Doug, uh, but thank you for joining us here for the open. We appreciate that. Oh, thanks for having me. Pleasure now, to be here. You've had this great seat you know, for the past 10, 12 years, you know, obviously with Hadoop and that evolution, MapReduce leading now to Apache Spark, you're talking about that a bit this morning. Characterize it from really the best view of all, I think, that you've had and, and how you would characterize this evolution toward Apache Spark. Yeah, no, as I, as I said in the keynote this morning, uh, you know, from the be very early days, it wasn't one project, uh, it's an ecosystem. Uh, that, that, that developed uh, within a year or two. We, we had um, uh, things like Pig and Hive and, and HBase building on top of the, uh, the, the core Hadoop. Um, and, uh, and Spark is just a, is a, you know, a, a, another step in that, a big one. Uh, you know, Spark is, is incredibly useful. Um, uh, it's on its way to replacing MapReduce. Um, uh, and, uh, but that's what excites me the most is seeing this, this process, uh, this evolution um, uh, that, that this platform is reinventing itself on a regular basis and improving um, at a rate that we haven't seen uh, before in enterprise software. Um, right. it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful time. Well, and, and this might be getting way too far ahead, but I'm just kind of curious. We've, we've talked a lot about this acceleration and what's happened with Spark and, and how this easier, easier, simpler, faster mantra has, has really become you know, uh, the code here. But do you see, is, there a, is it possible that there's a barrier coming, or there's going to be a new iteration, a new product, a new system or service that's going to then render Spark to the back page? I mean, um, or, even the whole or even, yeah, because this energy that's created through open source really kind of lends itself toward that. Um, we'll see, I mean, it's, I, I, obviously I don't know the answer because the, the, the community uh, sort of votes, users decide um, uh, where, where we go as an, as an ecosystem based on, on what's useful. Um, uh, my guess there's there's some tensions. You know, people uh, they learn some new system, they adopt it, um, uh, they embrace it, uh, and they can't give it up lightly. Um, they, they invest a lot in it, um, and uh, and so you want to pick things that are going to last. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so in order to um, really become uh, a, a new thing that's that's brought widely used, um, it need, there's a certain threshold that has to be be passed. Um, I think there will be new things. Will they replace major existing components? Hard to say. I mean, we, so we, with HGFS, there's sort of three, comp or sorry, with uh, Hadoop, there's three components, HGFS, Yarn, MapReduce, mm -hmm. and Spark is really on its way to replacing MapReduce, mm -hmm. as, I, as I said. Um, but HGFS and Yarn look to still have a Still a very long strong line. places. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we'll see, you know, will something ever replace Spark completely? I mean, nothing ever dies in software, right? Mm -hmm. There's always legacy. Um, uh, but could some new, uh, you know, generation of, of, plot, of execution engine come along that's superior in every way. It's possible. Um, mm -hmm. It wouldn't be my, my most likely outcome in the, in the short term. Mm -hmm. I think we, we've got enough invested in Spark as an execution engine. Um, but there's things, you know, beyond that. You know, we're seeing Kafka providing tremendous utility. It's not replacing mm -hmm. Spark by any means. It's a, it's a compliment, mm -hmm. um, a, another compliment. Uh, so I think we see more things like that. Um, uh, but you know, change is, is the, the new normal. Mm -hmm. um, and so you know, eventually, a lot of things, these things will, will go away. And, and it's a good thing, um, uh, generally speaking, um, uh, because we're getting uh, people more effective systems. Mm -hmm. right. So let me key off something you said about this, the innovation in the ecosystem. And I mean, it is unprecedented. Um, but there's, there's a trade-off, you know, on the one extreme sort of let's say Oracle for data management controls and carefully integrates everything yep. and so it's slow to evolve. But it's integrated so it's a little bit easier on the developer, the administrator. Um, at the Cladera Analyst Day, I, I talked briefly to the VP of Engineering, I forgot his name, and he said, you know, when we, when we take a new project, a new Apache project, 
to be part of our curated distro, we uh, budget 50% of the engineering cycles for that project for interop. Is he talking about like interop with your management tools like Cloudera Manager and Navigator, or is it something where it's you know one off? Well, not really one off, but you know engine by engine. Probably more the latter. Um, a lot of it is uh, making sure the security. Um, you, have a, you have a coherent security story across the stack that things stay encrypted right. um, using the same keys, ideally, right. um, and the same key services. Um, uh, and you know, so you, you need coherence at, at that at that level. Um, the logging, um, the you know, the auditability, um, and that ends up appearing in in our management suite. Um, but it's actually stuff that is shared by the by people who are using other management suites. Um, so uh, I, I think he means investment in the open source projects, not investment in, in proprietary by any okay, means. Okay, okay, um, that's it. That says a lot because yeah. what he's saying is, you need a you need a sort of coherent conceptual model for the security, for example, mm. to wrap the other tools around, whether yours or others. I mean, the, the early adopters of these tools are always happy to use them as islands with no security. Yeah. Um, but as they move down the line, and you start having somebody who sees you know, something providing some incremental value, they just want it to slot in. And so you know, it comes to, to vendors like Cloudera right. uh, to do a lot of the work of making them, them slot in simply. Um, so Cloudera was way out in front in terms of championing Spark you know, as a MapReduce uh, replacement. Um, what are some of the compute engines that used to sit on MapReduce that you're wrapping now around Spark ones you've done and ones you still have yet to do? We, we, I mean, most of the big ones um, uh, have, have moved, um, or it's in the process, or you're able to, to now at least uh, try running them on top of Spark instead of MapReduce. So Pig um, has now been ported uh, yeah. to live on top of, Ma of Spark, um, as has Hive. Um, and those, are the, those were the two you know, classic engines on, on, uh, of the ecosystem uh, from, from the old days, and, and getting them moved has been huge. Um, then we see you know, a lot of uh, integration work, um, uh, making uh, you know, Spark talk well to HBase, uh, making it um, work well with solar, um, uh, and, then, and then other applications. So I, I, I also mentioned this morning the um, uh, GATK, the, the uh, Genomic Analysis Toolkit from, um, uh, what are they called? Um, the Broad Institute in, in Boston. Um, uh, getting that ported, um, and so that's a, a, st a standard of that industry, um, yeah. and so it's a vertical, um, uh, piece of software, um, but having it use Spark as its underlying engine is a huge step, um, right. um, moving, moving existing workloads. And we're seeing that, um, you're seeing lots of folks talking about that today on, on the stage. Would it be fair to say that that convergence around the new execution engine simplifies life for not just developers, but maybe admins as well? Oh sure, sure, the more we can consolidate on, on one engine. I mean, I think, generally speaking, um, uh, it's, it's nice if the ecosystem has one primary general purpose engine right. um, uh, that can handle all kinds of different workloads, and then a handful of um, uh, more specific engines that are highly optimized for, for tests. So you've got solar, um, uh, you know, Spark is never probably going to be an uh, interactive search engine. Um, right. It's never going to be a key value store like HBase. Um, uh, there, there are certain things that it's not going to do, but um, for everything else, um, it's nice to have this general purpose API that you can plug under them and, and support lots of engines, and Spark is, is the best one out there today. And that was actually my next question, which is, can we see, maybe obviously not around Spark, but can we see some convergence around storage? Not complete, but more, so that you know, we don't, the, the cloud guys talk to us about, uh, actually IBM of all, of all companies, you know, about a data management fabric where they're orchestrating different, you know, storage uh, engines. Can we see something that moves in that direction? Um, you know, it might be nice, it's, it's hard to say. Um, uh, HGFS is going strong yeah. um, uh, so for the on-premises uh, storage engine, um, uh, and HBase obviously builds on that. Uh, now we see Kudu, Apache yeah. Kudu coming along, yeah. um, which doesn't build on HGFS. Um, so it, as much as possible, we need to make it play well. Right. Um, it's got a lot of uh, benefits for, for a lot of applications, and there's good reasons why it's not built on HGFS. Um, uh, and then also we have um, uh, you know, cloud storage, um, uh, the block storage, you know, things, things like uh, S3 uh, and similar from uh, Microsoft and, and Google, um, are really important to people. And, and they need to be first class citizens in the big data world, which right. they, they aren't really today. Um, so, you know, in some, hands, in some ways it'd be nice to have a consolidated storage story. Um, I don't think we're, we're headed there right now. 
Um, Let's talk about the application world a little bit. We've heard a lot of, um, I mean, intelligence is being thrown around every which way, like intelligent augmentation, artificial intelligence, business intelligence, the intelligent cloud. Heard about that today. Ultimately, what does uh, this all mean to, to developing an application? I mean, uh, I mean the contextual and the relevance and, and all that that you're able to create these really rich experiences now that yeah, maybe yeah, you yeah. couldn't before. I mean, intelligence is clearly a buzzword, yeah. you know, and, and like smart, you know. It, yeah. it, it, that said, um, you know, the buzzword is useful in that we are doing things better than we were before. Um, and we're using data to accomplish it. Um, and we're seeing fundamental advances in so many industries. Um, it's, it's not just, um, uh, you know, the, the, the web companies um, uh, delivering ads better uh, by any means. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's financial institutions running tighter ships, uh, fighting fraud, um, managing, understanding their, their risk exposure. Um, it's, you know, pharmaceuticals, um, better understanding their, their medicines, mm -hmm. um, better understanding, you know, healthcare, better hospitals, retailers, ma managing inventory factories, production, uh, farmers, their, their crops. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's all over, uh, uh, trains, planes, and automobiles. So, how did, uh, so, so when does this hit the marketplace? When, when do you think, as socially, that we're going to start appreciating and realizing these gains? As, as ultimate end users, everybody here is going to benefit from that, not just professionally, but obviously personally, in, in their personal interactions. It's a slower process than you might expect. Um, it's not like consumers adopting a new app on their phone, which can happen you know, within a year. You can have this huge groundswell. Um, enterprises shifting their technology stack just necessarily happen slower. You've got, you've got big institutions, they're big, big ships to turn. Um, uh, now, now and then you get startups that can really sort of reinvent things. You know, we see that with, with companies like Uber and Tesla, so Uber, which right. are really yeah. using big data from the outset um, and, and are doing you know, phenomenally well. Um, but your, you know, your classic um, you know, major um, uh, companies are all adopting this stuff, um, but they've got to integrate it and, and turn these ships. Um, so they all have pilots, they all have you know, some early products in production, um, but it's a long road. Mm -hmm. and we're you know, still a small percentage. So I think it's going to be over the next decade. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to really see this um, become the standard. It's now the standard for new uh, new work, mm -hmm. um, uh, but it's not replacing you still uh, all, all this legacy yeah. work that has and to be. And that just addressed. takes a long time to turn over. And it's and in some cases it's thankless work, and it's right. you know it's, it's it's smarter a lot of times, frankly, to to wait until you really are forced to to redo that part mm -hmm. um, uh, rather than be proactive. Mm -hmm. Just a um, uh, question on the sort of the spectrum of who owns you know making the stuff work, mm -hmm. and and. Um, and how, simpler, how simple it can be for developers. Yeah. So let's say we have a spectrum. Um, there's the Hadoop that runs in your data center. Yep. There's the Hadoop that's been designed to assume it runs in the cloud, so it knows about separation of storage, compute. It, it understands about ephemeral infrastructure, you know, stuff yep. like that. Yep. And then there's the cloud native services, you know, like, Kinesis, Firehose, and Lambda, and DynamoDB, or Redshift. Right, right. Um, help, help us walk through the trade-offs between those. And um, I assume, you know, at this end, the sort of the cloud native spectrum, you have simplicity, but you, there's, you're trading choices. Help us think through that. I mean, the, the classic choice is, is that of lock-in, yeah. uh, a vendor lock-in, you know, we, we, in the, in the um, uh, RDBMS industry, yeah. um, people build applications at the center of their organizations uh, that um, uh, were owned by a company that could yeah. you know, charge arbitrarily and change the rates and, and maybe not advance things the way you'd want and so on. Right. Um, now we've moved to a different um, uh, basis with, with open source um, uh, where people can much more easily choose among uh, vendors and, and uh, how, to, how to, as you mentioned, how to deploy it, whether it's uh, in the cloud or on-premises. Um, and yet, people <laughs> seem to almost be willing to sacrifice that, that, uh, that flexibility. They, I mean, people complained a lot about lock-in. Right. Um, and I think they don't realize a lot of times uh, that the cloud can, can lock you in completely. Um, and if you're not careful. Right. But I think you can be careful. I think if you, if you use um, uh, all of the APIs that you build to um, are open source uh, components, um, uh, then you can, you can very easily build something which is, is portable. Um, so you're, if I'm understanding you right, the APIs will give you data freedom. 
I mean, it's more than the APIs. Um, uh, okay. it, you've got to have the implementation that is, I mean, because different implementations may not implement the APIs equivalently. You know, I mean. Well, it, like a map bar. Or yeah, a, well, oh. it, it, you know, just because something compiles doesn't mean it runs against somebody else's oh, uh, okay. implementation. So I, that, but that's one of the great things about open source um, is that we don't standardize on uh, APIs as much as implementations. Okay. And we all agree on this is the implementation of this functionality and that gets you a much higher degree of compatibility. So let me ask one last question, which is, so your distro, um, there's a lot of work, I mean, even from the very name, Cloud Era, you know, yep. assumes we're going to be there, but the management tools that make it, you know, consumable, yep. um, they have to be very different from what's on-prem in your data center to what's in the cloud. Is, uh, is the, that a fair statement? Not yeah. completely. So there's, okay. some, there's definitely some distinctions. Um, but largely we think of the, the we've got a, a product called Cloudera Director, yeah. which helps you run in the cloud. Um, and largely it helps you run um, uh, our management suite in the cloud. Um, and then use the, the, the standard management suite, the same one you'd use on-premises uh, to manage your instances in the cloud. Okay. There's obviously features that we're going to add to the management around uh, ephemeral clusters um, and you know, adding and removing nodes on the fly um, uh, that are fairly cloud specific. Okay. Um, uh, and so, so there, there's some of that. Um, but for the most part, the cloud uh, can, be, can be a layer um, uh, that helps you uh, bring up okay. uh, instances. And, and okay. bring instances. Doug, before we let you take off, um, just some, some overall thoughts about, about what you're seeing here this week. Uh, compared to the first gathering you know, some three years ago, um, it's a little different scene right now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's, it's phenomenal to see the excitement around Spark. It's really, it's really come of age. Um, it, it's uh, no longer just something that people are using in science projects. It now has those, those features that people really need, uh, the sort of security and, and manageability. Um, uh, and, and we're seeing the, 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 the fruit of that um, uh, in, in all of these uh, applications and the, and the interest you can right. see all around us here. Right. Um, uh, you know, we've got, what, a thousand people or more here? Um, uh, 3,500. 3,500, all 3, right, there we go. Yeah. Um, that's phenomenal. Yeah, it sure um, is. Yeah. Well, thank you for the time. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's been a pleasure Great to chat with you once again. Always uh, welcome here on theCUBE. We appreciate the time and wish you all the best down the road here. Down the road in your many hybrids, <laughs> as a matter of fact. A man on the cutting edge, you might say. All right, we'll be back with more. George and I will as we continue our coverage here on theCUBE.